Welcome into the Steelers Talk Mailbag. I am your host, Jack Sperry, and this is one of my favorite segments I get to do all week because you guys get to tell me which Steelers topics you want me to discuss. I love having this two-way conversation with you guys. And if you want to get a question on a future edition of Steelers Talk, you join us for our Thursday, uh, Thursday live shows at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, where we answer these questions every single week. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now. Join us for our live shows. And with that, I'll pause and open it up for questions. Got one from Mayas. What's up, Mayas? We got what's up, Koopy and also Jackie. Do you guys see the Steelers in the Super Bowl? And also, what about Cooper Cup to the Steelers? Um, for me personally, Mayas, I could, you know, I think there's a world where the Steelers make the Super Bowl this year. I think you need to get another weapon. And, you know, things need to go your way in the postseason. You know, there's lots of great teams in the AFC in particular, lots of great quarterbacks. Um, but the Steelers' defense is awesome. And, like, if the, this Pittsburgh Steelers' offense can learn to be a very balanced unit, Russell Wilson protects the football, comes up clutch in close games in the fourth quarter like he's done his entire career. Yeah, I mean, Russ has the experience that you want and that you they, that Super Bowl-winning teams have. So, um, I, I, I think that this team, you know, is doing their best to try to give themselves the best shot at a title, and only time will tell if that actually comes to fruition. When it comes to Cooper Cup, it's with a K, but absolutely. Then we got one from Omar's Burner, $5 super chat from the con artist, says, channeling my inner windhorst and wondering why the Rams are pushing Puka back. Very interesting what would happen if the Rams lose tonight. Fire sale. Well, I think if they, if they lose tonight, they're almost for sure going to trade Cooper Cup. And, you know, I don't think it's a secret that they're shopping Cooper Cup, right? And I just – I don't know if the Puka situation has any uh, bearing on how they feel about Cooper Cup. I think that Puka's just ready to play. Um, I, you know, it, it just sounds like he's he's gotten a lot better this week, and now he's going to be on a limited snap count uh, for that football game. So I guess we'll see what ends up happening in that game. So let me know down there in the comments section, percent chance that the Pittsburgh Steelers land Cooper Cup – in a trade, put it on a scale of 0 to 100 for me down there in the comment section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question with a number from 0 to 100. Got a $5 super chat here from Vibin' with the Dog. Says, Coop, Jack, what's good? Sorry it's been a minute. Had to deal with some things. All is well. How about Russ, smirky face? Still want to see us use Justin Fields, though. Here we go. And I agree with Vibin here. Uh, I think that, you know, last week against the Jets, there were some low red zone situations, some QB sneak situations where I was like, maybe want to get the, the the big quarterback in there instead of the 5'10 guy, right? You know, and plus it, not to mention, you probably want to preserve Russ's health a little bit in those situations as well because Russ is going to have to push off with that calf in those type of situations. And that just seems like um, the type of thing that could aggravate whatever calf issue he was having. Now, it sounds like he's back to 100%, but you never want a setback, right? So, uh, yeah, I think in certain situations, low red zone, short yardage, um, four-minute drill even, I would definitely like to see Justin Fields have a package and get in there from time to time. Then we got one from uh, Wilkes, um, is what I, how I'm going to pronounce this here. It says, we need to sign a good veteran tackle to help put our O-line, and Jones isn't good enough. I completely agree with you uh, that Jones has not been good enough this season. Plain simply, he's been awful. He's been hot garbage. He's been doo doo garbage baby. He's been awful. Okay, but who are you gonna sign? You know, I don't think David Bakhtiari wants to play right tackle. Uh, Donovan Smith uh, has been a left tackle for the last several years. Does he want to come play for the Steelers and play right tackle? I don't know. Um, there's really not a lot of options, and honestly, people don't really trade tackles at the trade deadline either. And there's not really many that are expected to be hitting the open market. Like Walker Little, the backup tackle, the swing tackle from Jacksonville, is like the best tackle that might get traded. Like, do the Steelers take a swing on him for a seventh-round pick? I mean, maybe. Um, but goodness gracious, I mean, it's, there's just not a lot of great options, unfortunately. And right now, uh, I think that Broderick Jones' status as a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers, even heading into next year, is starting to get within question. Then we got one from Batman here. It says, do you think the Steelers draft a quarterback next year and dump fields? Um, it's too early to tell Batman, but I think it's a possibility, right? If Russell Wilson and Justin Fields just aren't cutting it um, at by the end of this season and, you know, it's just not looking good for either one of them, then, yeah, you got to draft a quarterback. And even if Russell Wilson ends up being the short-term answer here and they sign him to another contract – you know, if there's a quarterback that you like in, like, round three, round four that you think could develop a little bit, maybe even in round two, um, maybe you think about taking somebody like that. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see uh, once the draft season goes around. 
Um, there's a lot of intriguing quarterback prospects this year. It's not a great quarterback class, but some very interesting names. Uh, so I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there, Batman. All right, now go ahead and check out our friends at Fanatics if you guys want a brand-new Russell Wilson jersey in your closet today. If you believe in Russ, you think that this team can uh, start winning playoff games again with this guy under center, uh, make sure you guys use uh, chatsports.com slash Russ. Um, we're going to put that link in the comments and description of today's show. And if you click that link and you make a purchase, Fanatics is going to send us part of the proceeds. So it helps out the channel. It helps you out because you get a brand new Russell Wilson jersey to add to your collection. It's all good stuff, man. So make sure you guys go down there right now. Use chatsports.com slash Russ to get your Russell Wilson jersey today. Got one from Jinji. Let's go. It says, do you see the Steelers taking another offensive lineman, specifically tackle Early in the 2025 draft. Also, big shout out from a Steelers fan from Dallas. Keep doing what y'all doing. Gingy, we're from da We're in Dallas. Let's go, Let's go meet up, Gingy. Let us know in the chat where you're at, where you want to meet up. Uh, so, Gingy, answer your question here, man. It's it's not off the table. You know, Dan Moore Jr. is a free agent if the Steelers don't bring him back. Um, that certainly creates a hole. Troy Fautano will be back, but like at this point, I don't know if I trust Project Jones to play on the left or the right side, if I'm being completely honest. So right now, it's certainly an option, Gingy. Uh, and let us know in the chat if you wanna if you wanna come meet me and Coop somewhere and hang out. Got one from Six Rings says, How close is Corey Trice to getting back? A uh, relatively closer. I it's not looking like this week six rings, but I think it's probably closer to after the bye. Sounds like the Calvary is gonna be coming back after the uh after the bye, Nick Herbig, um, Corey Trice Jr., of course Zach Frazier. Um, you're, you're getting a lot of got a, getting a lot of injured players back after uh, the the bye. It seems like so that's good news. Got one from Gabe Edwards. What's up, Gabe? Says, do you think that Deshaun Elliott deserves a new contract with the Steelers? I believe he signed a two-year deal, if I'm not mistaken, with the Steelers. Um, so do they give him an extension this offseason? Certainly possible. If you continue, if he's an All-Pro this year. Like, you certainly consider bringing him back, and honestly, he's making more plays on film than Minka Fitzpatrick. Now, Minka's still very good. Defenses are kind of avoiding him, um, which definitely helps out the Pittsburgh Steelers' defense from a spatial perspective. He's such a good player. But, you know, Deshaun has been equally as good, if not better, um, than Minka this year, and, you know, I want him to be a Steeler for a while now. He's a really, really good player, very versatile, very key piece to this defense, and I want him here in Pittsburgh for a while as long as he's playing that way. Got the original Black Diamond in the chat here. Samuel Pugh says Roman Wilson continues to get hurt, but it's reports he's the best on the field outside GP. When practicing, could he just be in the doghouse for something Tomlin doesn't want to put out? It's possible, Sam. It's also possible that Mark Caboli, the guy that said that, uh, just doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> if I'm being honest, he was the one that said that was pushing the Kenny Pickett was, is like so good in practice narrative. Right, he was a big reason why Steelers fans had such big expectations for Kenny Pickett because he, I think the word he used for Kenny Pickett was he was flawless in OTAs and in training camp practices. And, you know, people were just saying, man, Kenny Pickett is just lighting it up in practice. But it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure if that was actually the case. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I really trust Kaboli's word entirely on who's playing well in practice or not. Um, but you know, is it possible that Roman did something that Tomlin doesn't want to ex doesn't want to divulge? It's certainly possible, but I think the more likely scenario here is Roman Wilson uh, just wasn't playing well enough to play. So get well soon, uh, Roman Wilson, man. He just had that really uh, bad uh, reaggravation of his hamstring injury. It looks like he's going to be out for multiple weeks, and you know he's going to have to get on a moving train, which probably means he's probably not going to play this season. So. Uh, you never know who watches our videos, man. Roman, if, we're, if you're watching, we love you. We appreciate you, man. Uh, spam those tents if you want to show some love to Roman Wilson. So our Week 8 watch party this week uh, for Monday Night Football, we're going to be going live at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're not going to have a normal Steelers Talk live show like we usually do on Mondays. But what we're going to do is we're going to have our watch party 7 p.m. Eastern on Monday, pregame tailgate, followed by live play-by-play -play and extensive postgame coverage. Plus then, on Tuesday, we will be going live along with our normal Thursday live show uh, that week. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Until next time, guys, here we go, Steelers.